What is 3PL and more importantly, what you should be asking before you choose the 3PL? This is Burak Yoga. I'm the founder of Forescape Digital Freight Forwarder. Today's video, I will be explaining you and giving you important tips about how to choose a 3PL, what question you should be asking, understand the price stru structure, and more importantly, how you should be considering to expand your business. You might be selling on Shopify or Amazon, but you want to expand. There will be a lot of changes in 2024 for inventory management and international shipments. Let's get started. When it comes to choosing the correct 3PL for your business, it's the most important thing to understand the pricing and the structure. Every business is different and every business's needs are different. So when it comes to choosing the correct 3PL, the most important thing to understand is your lending cost and more importantly, your 3PL cost. When we talk about the 3PL cost, a lot of people only think about that as storage. However, there are a lot of different costs that they should be concerned about, such as unloading fees, inbound fees, such as when you receive the container into a warehouse, it needs to be palletized, shrink wrapped, and more importantly, put the labels for both cartons and the pallets. So all these fees need to be correctly asked in the very beginning because there are a lot of uh, 3PLs in, in the US or the rest of the world, they might be having uh, not fully transparent pricing. And of course, the pallet storage, some of the warehouses charges pallet storage per pallet, or sometimes they're charging square feet or cubic meter. So it's important for you to understand the correct business model and the correct charge. And what about the after storage? We're looking at the outbound. So every warehouse generally has two or three different ways of outbounding the orders. The first one will be loose cartons. So you can have a shipment that comes in the full carton and you want to expand, you want to export this product or you want to ship this to Amazon FBA or to a different marketplace such as Chivi or Walmart. So basically the warehouse will be charging you outbounding this carton, putting the labels and then delivering the product to UPS or FedEx or different um, postal service that you choose. The second option that we're talking about is the LTL. It means that the palletization. So the warehouse needs to take, pick each carton and put them into a pallet, shrink wrap it, and put the correct uh, pallet label as well as the, the pallet bill of lading. Bill of lading is a, a proof of a paper that your truck company is gonna come and pick up. And if you're doing sort of a drop shipping or if you're a Shopify seller, then you would like to probably ship an individual item. So basically what we do is we, cr we cut the carton, we take out a unit and we put that into a new package and then shipping out. So this is called per pick and pack. And this is gonna obviously cost a little bit more because it takes, it consumes more time to prepare this order. So the pricing structure when it comes to a 3PL is very important to understand your cost. And this is one of the biggest actually costs right now in the world to uh, send the product to the end customer. So the second tip today I would like to give you is the integration technology and more importantly, flexibility of your 3PL. Because every year the business is changing and there are new marketplaces that you would like to maybe sell your product. There could be different business models that you would like to transact your business. Such as in 2022, one of the biggest uh, product selling opportunity was Amazon FBA. 23 and 3, it's still Amazon FBA, but there are new marketplaces such as Walmart, Shopify, or maybe Timu or TikTok is taking over this maybe potential business. So you want to work with a 3PL, which can help you to uh, add new services. So that's why it's very important to work with a 3PL is actually modern, newly designed, has the racking system, has the correct labeling system, correct technology, and more importantly, integration. So one of the most important thing is that if you have a good selling product, let's say you're selling a cocktail shaker and you would like to expand this product, Amazon FBA, you want to put that maybe target.com, you want to add that to walmart.com, you want to edit, create your own Shopify, which is I think getting very popular for next year to be one of the most business key business model because then you can build your own email list, you can build your own customers. So this is why it's very important to work with a uh, 3PL where you can actually integrate all your, uh, you can integrate all your inventory, you can integrate all your uh, marketplaces under the same platform 
and more importantly, give the access to your 3PL to do all the work. Because inventory management is one of the most important thing in 2024 and 2023 to maximize your cash flow. It's all depending on how much successful you're managing your 3PL relationship, your inventory, because that's depending on your cash flow. So this is why when you choose your 3PL, you should be asking them the right questions, what kind of integrations they have, and more importantly, what kind of uh, technology that they can support and if they're flexible. This is something very important, crucial for your business. So we talked about two important things, pricing and the flexibility technology integration. What is the third thing? So the third thing you can see that behind me, a forklift working. So inbound and outbound speed is something very important. In 2023, the customer behaviors change a lot. A lot of customers, they stop buying products from online or e-commerce. They went back to retail. One of the reasons why it was that people over shopped in 2021 during the pandemic with the online stores. So today's video, I will be explaining you why outbound is very important, the speed of that, because most of the customers, they want to receive the products faster than actually prime speed, like 24 hours to 48 hours. A lot of customers, they want to receive products more customized in a nicer packaging and more importantly, faster. This is why, especially Amazon FBA, for example, changed a lot and Amazon uh, started more fulfillment centers. So inbound and outbound order speed is something very important. You can see in here that actually empty uh, unloading a container takes almost three to four hours. So palletizing them and store that, the entire process per a pallet takes another two, two, two hours. By the time you want to outbound your orders, it can take between 72 hours and 96 hours. Most of the warehouses, they will be talking to you about the, the time and is faster than actual time of that they operate the product. So this is why you should be asking the standard operation time for inbound, for storage, outbound. And obviously, you can see in here, and outbounding a ready pallet is going to be much faster because this is already ready to go. And outbounding a pallet is going to be way faster than outbounding a carton because then I need to take out the carton from this pallet. Or if you want me to send out a product, individual unit, then it's going to take me some time to take out that product, put it in a box, send it. It might take up to 96 hours. So this is why when you're having a contract with your 3PL, you should be asking what's the operating time, if they can stick with it, how accurate they are, and make sure you get the access to WMS and do not send your entire order to a 3PL so fast. You need to make sure you do some tests and if everything goes well, then start go all in with the 3PL. And of course, the safety of your products. It's very important to work with a warehouse that they give you the insurance, the coverage, but more importantly, has the correct structure. So it's very difficult to actually choose a warehouse in front of your computer. So sometimes you should be visiting the warehouse or at least you should be asking the correct pictures. You should be asking the sales representative to send you a video. So there are some warehouses, they're not using a rec system. Rec system is something that you can see behind me where companies are keeping the products on the, on the, on the racks. So there are two types of actually structure that we're talking about here. Number one, wrecking system. Number two, floor loading. So there are some of the products are floor loaded because maybe they will be uh, sending the product soon. So basically, if the product will be outbounded, then we can put them on the floor to leave the, uh, the doors easier. And the second reason is it could be very heavy to not to put on the racks. It doesn't matter what actually kind of storage they are doing. You should be asking to get, send you some pictures so you can see if the warehouse structure is clean, products are organized well but more importantly you definitely need to read terms and conditions to see if the product is lost damage or something worse happens what kind of insurance you have and how much is is actually covered by the warehouse so in this video i wanted to explain you the entire 3pl cho choices and it's really important to communicate well with your warehouse and asking the right questions before you make the decision because it can be really costly and timely for you to send the product to the wrong fulfillment center and more importantly 
their business model may not be 100% fitting you. So I definitely recommend you to either visit them or arrange a quick brief phone call or Zoom call. Don't let everything to be written on the emails. Obviously, that's something you should be doing. However, definitely have a call with them to explain, go through what is important, explain your business model. But more importantly, just don't think that it's going to be one day or one month, six months business. Tell them your business plan to see whether they can support you or not. So thank you for watching my video. Please don't forget to uh, click on the subscribe button and see you in the next video. Take care.